Supply chain challenges continue to plague farmers, but concerns about getting necessary inputs like crop chemicals forced some farmers earlier this year to do something they had never tried in the past. See if they could find that product online. That's as one company works to almost become the Amazon of Ag. We're in Brighton, Colorado. Uh, this is what we would call a primary fulfillment center. Walk into this warehouse that sets just outside of Denver. This is a true e-commerce business. This is a direct to farm business. And you'll find one of FBN's largest fulfillment centers to date. So what this building represents are all the speed, all the reliability, all of the, the ease of, of ordering and the ease of delivery that people have come to expect in other segments. Jack Cox, the vice president of global fulfillment and logistics for FBN, is one of the masterminds behind this place. The days of being limited by only what's in your local brick and mortar facility on your farm are, are over. We have the ability to get you really anything you want quickly, reliably, um, and so I think that's I think that's what this really represents. While the concept seems simple, this is one of five across the country. Each serves as a primary hub for storing ag inputs and products sold by FBN, all of which can be sourced and priced online. We have a lot of automation when that order comes in. It gets assigned to this building through our systems. That is all automated and happens uh, often within 15 minutes of an order being cleared through our approval process. Since it was founded in 2014, FBN's model and philosophy has met strong resistance among major seed and chemical manufacturers, ag retailers, and even some farmers. We've been told that FBN won't work from the beginning um, for every possible reason and every time uh, we said don't discount farmers. Charles Barron is a co-founder of FBN with an MBA from Harvard and a previous career in Silicon Valley with Google. It wasn't until he met his future brother-in-law, who's a Nebraska farmer, that he got a taste for agriculture. What I would say Amazon has done is it's taught the world what to expect. When I click the button, that product's going to show up two days later, and then I can always see what the price is. So those are great things that exist in the consumer world that don't exist in agriculture. And Cox used to work for Amazon. He saw how even that business transitioned and grew. This has happened in every e-commerce segment. This was Amazon 20 years ago, right? Same, same thing. Um, was that, you know, Amazon, when they first started, you could still call and, and like a catalog and give them your credit card and order up uh, a number, right, instead of doing it online. So you ease people into it, but once they get it, they get it, and, and, and the future is inevitable. While FBN has changed how agricultural inputs are priced and sold, the company stores those products in one of five large fulfillment centers like this, but then also sends product to satellite locations across the U.S. So Hayes, Kansas, for example. And so Hayes has some inventory there. So you can you can order, you can have an order delivered from Hayes uh, locally. And as soon as that happens, we're going to replenish from the inventory here. But data shows most farmers aren't sold on the idea of buying crop inputs online. Farm Journal has conducted an e-commerce survey since 2018, and it shows while 8% of farmers purchased crop inputs online in 2018, in 2021, that number had only climbed to 14%. That's because 80% say they are satisfied with their current input provider. And when farmers are considering purchasing crop inputs, the survey found price continues to be the number one factor, followed by availability and ease of purchasing along with delivery. As e-commerce adoption in ag remains slow, FBN has also changed up its original model. And it's not all online. FBN now has a field-based sales organization that works directly with farmers. We're not saying, hey, it's all online now. You've got to go sit online to, to work with us. We're going we're gonna to ease you into it. But for farmers looking to get a product last minute in the middle of planting season, Cox says that's where FBN is different. You're a farmer and you're in uh, northwest Nebraska. You're going in to look at your cart and you pick this item and it's here in our Brighton facility. It's going to say we will deliver this on typically, you know, you could see one or two days on that for, for that grower who's fairly close to this facility. Even with Cox's experience at Amazon, selling and delivering ag inputs is very different than what happens in the consumer world, which is also why FBN launched its own fleet this year. The rural environment, you know, the address isn't necessarily the shed where the farmer wants his product. Uh, the roads might not be always clearly marked. It, 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 there's a lot of challenges there. We, we, we figured it was best to kind of jump the gap ourselves, put our own trucks on the road, really manage that delivery experience ourselves, and, and, and just offer something that's just not available in the market. From manufacturing some of its own chemicals like glyphosate and glufosinate to now moving more of the purchasing of crop production inputs online, Cox says none of it has been easy or cheap. We have to execute. 
and, and that's always key, but everything we are building, the network we're building, the technology we're building, the people we're hiring, are all pointed in that direction to deliver that. But he believes it's those investments helping FBN become the Amazon of ag. Now, there are several ag retailers who are now working to digitize their business. A handful of those have an e-commerce option for farmers. But our partners at The Scoop tell us the number of retailers offering e-commerce today is growing by the month. Up next, do you know what may help the seed sourcing issue out west? Well, 600 bushel corn, of course. Customer support is next. 600 bushel the acre. Seriously?